to go back. I love the backstory. We talked a little bit about it today. And, and you have an amazing story, amazing journey with Jesus. And it started in high school, mm -hmm. right? You started attending. Tell us a little bit about that and how you got saved. Um, well, I, I started out um, just experiencing a whole different kind of experience with Jesus, I guess, at, at this summer camp that I went to. Mm -hmm. And I was a kid. I was in elementary school. And it, it became kind of this little lifeblood. And it was only once a year, one week out of the year. And so, um, it, you know, I still was learning about God at home. But it w there was a realness there. And, and so when I was in eighth grade, I thought, well, I'm, I'm too old to be a camper. I can't go back anymore. You know, it's all I had <laughs> to be with them. And I, when I got there, I found out that it was under new management, and I was crushed, and all my people that I was kind of come see were gone. And it was like one of those, you know, uh, traumatic from my little teenage life. <laughs> um, and realized that, um, that those people, people there were really born again Christians who were really, really passionate. Yeah. And um, so I just started to watch people and the, the, the big thing was just they were very joyful yeah. and they were very real and I, I was, I'm a very serious person so it's really like, I need that, I want that, I'm going to go for that, that's <laughs> what I'm going to do now. So you're watching them. So I just decided, yeah, I mean, I was just, we would have conversations, yeah. and it was just like this whole awakening. Wow. There's more to this whole yeah. Christian thing. And so um, one day, I went down to the lake, to, you know, in the woods. It was like just this beautiful, you know, and I just... At camp. At camp. Yeah. And I, did, I didn't really know what giving your life to Jesus was, but I did it. So I didn't really walk down an aisle. It was right. just, you know... And it was, it was during, we were, we were talking... Uh, Beth, you got saved a little bit after I did, it sounds like, but it was all during the charismatic renewal in the 80s, early 80s. Does anybody remember what they called the charismatic renewal? I mean, the Spirit of God was just being poured out. Mm -hmm. And Keith uh, yeah, Keith Green and uh, just, the oh, there was so, so much going on. But the Spirit of God was just drawing people. I mean, thousands and thousands of people got saved and filled with the Spirit. And you're just sensing. It sounded like, you know, nobody's really leading you to Christ, but they're sharing the mm -hmm. gospel and you're feeling, mm -hmm. feeling the drawing of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it yeah. was definitely, I mean, I can, uh, I can look back and see how the Lord put me here and the Lord put me here, right? Like, so I would be bumping into him almost, <laughs> you know, and, um, yeah, and so then great. I, so then I'm starting in, in high school and yeah. uh, I end up getting seated next to this girl I didn't know in my first period of my first class, the first day of school. And she was like, you're a Christian, aren't you? <laughs> and uh, she was um, a spirit-filled believer. And wow. she invited me to church. And we became friends. And that wow. was kind of the opening of just, you know, I was, I got into a youth group and um, just started really good experiences. I spent time with Jesus by myself Amen. when I was a teenager a lot. Wow. Um, Wow. And uh, so, I, and and I wanted I wanted to know him, yeah. and so he just let me, you know, understand him, and I learned the Bible, and it was just it was so really good. good. The presence of God kind of just was yeah. rich in that time. And that's when you know you started. You is that the time that you got baptized and or and baptized well, in the Holy I Spirit? I was in a in a youth group event. I got baptized in a you know, swimming pool. It was a, yeah. you know, fun event. So Anybody got... get baptized in a swimming pool? <laughs> Nobody? All right. Well. All my experiences were like not in the church, I guess. <laughs> At I don't the know. Lake, so, in the swimming yeah. pool. And then I experienced some, some, um, the Holy Spirit's touch in my bathroom. I mean, wow. I just would experience the Holy Spirit in ways that I didn't really know what it was. And you're still living at home, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're just, boom, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit's just moving on mm -hmm. you and you're going to youth group. And and you you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but it was like a like a bubbling up. And I was telling you, it's kind of similar to mine. It wasn't like you know I got slammed and mm -hmm, fell out, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. but it was almost like a just a bubbling mm -hmm. up of the Spirit of God. Yes, yeah, yeah, I that. mean it was a gradual experience for me. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people want to get deeper with the Spirit and try and feel like they're making these efforts, and it. You know, it was just one of those, okay, just, you know, relax. Yeah, relax. Just relax, <laughs> and, and God is with you. And mm -hmm. so so it was kind of a gradual, wonderful, beautiful 
um, presence of God that I, I knew he was really with me. And yeah. I was telling you earlier how just like once you experience the presence of God, mm. you, you're kind of done. You, you, there's no one that can argue you out of the Christian life. <laughs> there's no one who can change your mind That's because good. it's real. You know? and so I just, yeah, I just had kind of that, so good. this is real. Um, and uh, so, you know, all that time in high school, I was going full bore with singing and, yeah. you know, yeah. um, getting on stage and uh, didn't make any connection between your Christianity between. and performing art. Mm -hmm. and so, I was in a secular environment. Right. So the, the arts were for entertainment only. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know that that the Lord would have something in the arts that was a little bit more, more a lot more meaningful yes. in the future. Yeah. So, but he was training me. I mean, I was getting, I was just getting training. And yeah. I, my mom said I was singing when I was in the crib. She was like, you were always singing, <laughs> always singing. <laughs> I was kind of always like, my sister is a real, like, my sister's a lawyer. She's an introvert. She likes to read and read and read. And my other sister's an art professor. And I was like, just always <laughs> being told to like settle down and not settle be down. so dramatic <laughs> as I was down. slightly dramatic <laughs> and um so now I look back and I'm like I guess it was all in there yeah, it was but, all there yeah. it's in your DNA so, yeah. and that's so good because he here of course we teach um the seven mountains of cultural influence and how Christians need to enter into those mountains of influence as we call them these arenas if you will of influence and one of them is arts and entertainment and so often in the church, we've, we've heard teachings, you know, hey, it's just the church. You got to just do the church thing and try to get people in church. Well, yeah, we do that still. But Christians have talents and gifts that they use in these other areas that, that influence culture. That's why they, we call them the uh, mountains of cultural influence. And when we can get Christians in government or get Christians in education or arts and entertainment, it makes sense. You can begin to disciple, pull people in, give them the gospel and show them Christ. And so you're seeing you and it's just, and then, so you go to college, mm -hmm. right? And that's where you, you meet Dave, but you guys don't, you guys. We didn't hit it off right away. They didn't hit it off right away, but they did later, right? We did. <laughs> but it's a, it's a college where you, you it's both a Christian are. Christian college. Christian college mm -hmm. where you're studying music. Tell us a little we're, bit about what's I going on I went to there. study music education, which is all I wanted to do. I wanted to teach kids, um, and I wanted to do what I was doing in high school. I wanted to be the teacher and do that. Oh. You know, I wanted to be the high school teacher and teach choral music. That's, that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then I did it. So I kind awesome. of went into college, and, and we met there. And he was also a music ed major. Yeah. Um, fast forward a couple of years, <laughs> we started dating. And fast forward a few more months, several yeah. more months, yeah, and we several. got married. And, um, <laughs> and we moved to Lebanon. And um, yeah. he decided, no, I'm not going to be a music teacher. Mm. Pretty right off the bat and started building. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> a we, builder yeah, now. he's a builder. Yeah, good builder, too. Yeah. Um, and so, and I started teaching. Yeah. So I, you know, I was in the classroom yeah. teaching music, um, and then sort of started on the side doing theater. Gotcha. And it, so it wasn't, my degree isn't in theater. But you're, 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 but you're feeling, you're merging this, this whole thing. And, and tell us a story about here you are, you're spirit filled. You feel a passion for the arts. You want to teach young people. Tell us about how God began to pull all that together. Yeah, it is something I mean, that we're missing massively in our world. Wow. So I started to look at what that is and how, why do we need beauty? Um, and that it's beauty that's, that harkens us back, that calls us back to the garden. It calls mm -hmm. us to home. It's a thing that helps us remember. And it kind of awakens us to things that we can't get here. Mm. That's you know, so like, good. like, but also with worship, the worship of God, because in a sense, the worship of God is is an art form. God creates. Mm -hmm. God created the arts. God creates beauty. God creates those things. And so worship, singing, uh, creating songs, 
all of that creates a, you know, this image in our heart and what we see in the word, it connects it. Tell us a little bit about you know, the, the heart of worship that began to develop in, your, in you mm -hmm. and, and for the arts. It was just, it was kind of, that was kind of the marrying of the, the gifting of being, singing yeah. and being in front of people and, and the, the presence of God and bringing that through music. Yeah. So the prophetic and the, you know, the spontaneous singing and all of that. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier about um, truth when you're speaking truth that kind of it's the beauty of worship mm -hmm. that awakens the heart to that. Oh yeah. And so, um, so worship should be beautiful, yes. you know, and you know, just, just going after the, the things of God, God is beautiful. Yeah. He's beautiful. And that's not something that we think about, you know, cause we don't think about that, that visual or what we're hearing, but, um, just how that, so th that's going to start to like sort of then come together. Mm -hmm. So this is all coming together and I'm, I'm. I've got three kids, and it's by now you got it's it. busy. Yeah. It's like it's like I don't know, probably mm. fifth grade, third grade, and kindergarten, oh right? My goodness. And I'm, you know, you just started volunteering here, here yeah. and I'm I'm teaching, you know, every day in the classroom, and I'm directing musicals, and then I was in a musical. I was leading in a musical because you know, haven't been on stage for 20 years. It's time to get back on stage all at the same time. So it was kind of, I kind of got to, Breaks. yeah. Um, and so in that time, that was 2011. Mm. And uh, in that time, I was, it was like time to figure out, you know, to sit in front of the principal or the administrator and tell them what musical I was gonna do next mm. year. And I was like, okay, I gotta figure this out. So I got five minutes to do, you know, it was like kind of in a hurry. <laughs> and. Crunch time. Uh, um, I kept reading script after script after script because I now I felt like what I was going to bring my students needed to be worthy of them. Mm -hmm. That what we do on stage, we memorize. So if you're going to memorize something, it's going to get in you. It's going to get in here and mm -hmm. in here. And then you're going to speak it out. So it needed to be something that was wholesome and beautiful. And it was hard to find. <laughs> It yeah, was hard to find. So you're searching I'm for searching. scripts. You're searching for... I was frustrated. Yeah. Because if it was wholesome, it was a lot of times boring. Mm. And if it was high and artistic, it was a lot of times not wholesome. Right. And so I just, wow. you know, I... So, so anyway, I was in that process reading a lot of literature and a lot of scripts and like under the gun. I, I remember just... Was that in the Crucible? Well, was so, that right before so, you wrote... So, so New Year's Eve, I finally, you know, we've had Christmas break, I'm like finally breathing, you know, <laughs> and I, I'm like, okay, it's time to remember the Lord. Have you ever yes. been in those moments where you're like, okay, it's been just a few days before, since I've been in that word, because I've been just going and going and going. So I, I come, I'm sitting in my bed, I can remember the moment, and I'm like, Lord, it's New Year's Eve. I need, I need vision for the future you know it's kind of that where you Whoa. reflect on the past yeah. and figure out where you're going and I'm like I don't know I'm just like under it and um so I said could you give me a passage of scripture that would just awesome. you know give me vision you know, so I did that kind of like open it up you, know, <laughs> you, kind of you just flipped so the bible up spiritual <laughs> you know <laughs> I mean, you can do it. You can try it. I mean, it's all good in there, so you can just open it up <laughs> yes, and read. It's his word. So I opened it up, and it was the book of Ruth. And I was like, well, thanks, Lord, but this is not visionary. This is just a really pretty story. Mm. As I was reading it, I was like, this is the script. This is so beautiful. And this man, Boaz, yeah. is, he's like probably the most... Um, um, the type of Christ in the Old Testament yeah. that is the that is the most Christ-like yeah. in all. Like if you go down the list of yeah. Christ attributes, Redeemer like, kinsman. He's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And um, kinsman Redeemer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I thought Boaz on stage will be a picture of Jesus. Wow. And so. Um, and that's what we just saw. That. Yeah, it would, probably would have been cool to see it after I explained like it was Ruth. And um, it, it's really good in person if you ever do it again. It's just, they've yeah. just shut down. We're going to talk about what God is doing now. But. I knew that I was not a church musical person. Hmm. 
I was a worship leader. I was a worship person at church, and I was a theater person. But I didn't really want to do a church musical. Do you know what I mean? I got you. Okay, that sounds snotty, but <laughs> meet the real Beth Kenneth. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so you're, it was but like you're a bringing, different... You're bringing the secular... In, you're bringing Christianity into the secular, and it's, it's, you're not trying to over... Yeah, I knew that it, it wasn't going to be a church musical. Right. And I just knew, well, I didn't know anything at that point. I was just like <laughs> reading the Bible going, this is, and it's too bad I don't write musicals because I would do that. I would write that if I wrote musicals, you <laughs> you're, know. You're talking to God like that. Are yeah, and the Lord's yourself? like, you're going to write that. I'm <laughs> like, no, I direct musicals. I am in a musical. I teach music. I don't. So, um, so then I, you know, we, like I said, we were really busy put that aside. I didn't completely forget it, but I put it aside. Um, my brother-in-law, Dave's brother, is a musician, composer, music teacher, worship leader, but he, but, you know, he's, he's an amazing composer. Yeah. And he says to me, hey, Beth, let's write a musical. Just out of nowhere. <laughs> like, he didn't know that you were... No. And so I said, okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, well, I hope you don't have an idea because I already have the story. I already know what the story is. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And then um, we both kind of got busy, and we didn't forget about it, but we just, you know. And then I also work with a guy named Jeff Smith, who um, he writes all the shows at Kings Island, and he, he's an orchestrator. And, um, and he lives right down the street, and I was teaching his kids at the school. And he, I, when I was, I was um, in the middle of directing a big show, and he always played. Oh, that yeah. was one, two, and three. the mouth of two or three witnesses, yeah. let yeah. every word be established. So, right. anyway, Go, so. Come on, give the Lord praise right there. That is just <laughs> so good. I mean, know that the Lord orders your steps. He orders our steps. He knows where to take us. He had you in the neighborhood. He had you marry Dave. I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> years right. prior, but it's so interesting uh, that now you're pulling the word of God mm -hmm. and you're and you're going to put this mm -hmm. on stage in kind of a mid Midwestern early oh, yeah. 1900s that was the other thing. format. When I was looking for scripts, I was like, I really want to do something in the 30s for whatever reason. So when I was looking at Ruth. I just, I was like, well, I don't really want to do it with biblical robes on. So I think I'll put it, <laughs> hmm, let me think. I need a famine. Mm -hmm. It's the first thing you need to tell the story of Ruth. You need a famine, yeah. And I need um, a foreigner. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, she, so it's the Dust Bowl in the 1930s in Kansas. Yeah. And that was a famine. And um, Kansas is the, the breadbasket of America. Mm -hmm. And in Israel, it's Bethlehem which is the house of bread. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, this is where, you know, this is where we grow wheat. And so it was just, yeah. her parents get deported. I, you know, was learning about the deportation in the 30s mm -hmm. of Mexicans. And mm -hmm. um, so then she meets this farmer. She comes back to Kansas and she meets this farmer, Bo. Or Boaz. And, um, yeah. and they live happily ever after. And that was 2013. Um, and you saw the, 2016 yeah. version there. Yeah. Um, so that was four years ago. Wow. And it's been, I would say it's been in like five different states, probably in like seven or eight different theaters since then. So we're trying to get it moving <laughs> around. Oh, it's, I'm telling you, it, it truly, I, I, I keep prophesying over it. It's going to, you know, <laughs> just the arts and entertainment world. And in and, and so many ways, you look at, not only the theater, but movie theaters mm -hmm. are just being crushed, the movie industry. But God is doing something in you. He's speaking something about this season. And you're still working it out, but there's something of a reformation we talked about that God wants to birth. Out of ashes comes beauty. After, after I talked with you today, I thought, Beauty for ashes, Lord, this reformation in the arts. Mm -hmm. Tell us what God is speaking to you about the arts and what he might want to do through you and how he might raise up others. Well, I think um, so that that was we kind of that was the 2013 project and I hadn't written since then. And um, it was sort of time to do it again. So we had scheduled a 2020 um, premiere of takes place in the 1800s in Ireland, 
And, and nobody's seen that yet. Nobody's seen oh. that. It's all still right here. It was supposed to premiere two months ago, um, yeah. just like this one. And um, it's all good. It's okay. But so okay. all that to say, yeah. we were like moving towards this, you know, new big show that I had been writing for the past three years. And, um, and it's, you know, now we're going, okay, what is this? Wow. So that was like, you know, putting wow. on the brakes. And, but I think the thing is uh, the Lord just saying, just keep planting the seeds. Just keep being steady. And, you know, every time I look around, you look around and you just get, you know, you just, your, your hope goes down the drain and you get, you can get anxious very easily. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just kind of put, what is, I can't do anything about anything. I can just do what God gave me That's to do. Right. So I'm That's just going right. to do what God gave me to do. That's and, good. you know, when God happens to give you a gift that's a little bit more overt mm -hmm. or that draws applause, it's not better than a gift that's quiet and that's that does right. not receive applause. Right. Frankly, I think that he values the ones that don't get applause even more. Amen. Because you have to be faithful and, and you know. So what I do, I mean, oh, this is great, and you know, and... That's easy to ride on that, and so I have to I have to watch out for that. So that's just a little pause that I no, have to put I in there. It, but yeah. that's important. Yeah. That whatever the Lord has given you to do, how simple and small it feels for you mm -hmm. in this season, because right now it feels like everything is like we can't move forward. Sort of do yeah. it, just do that thing. Yeah. And so I just keep, you know, just working at it here and there, and it's. It's that a renaissance. Yes. A renaissance. Great word. Mm -hmm. And Because I don't know what's going to happen with Broadway. No. And, you know, I when I'm teaching my kids, I'm always saying, you know, Broadway is is kind of the top standard of, of skill and quality of performance. Mm. But for me, it's not the top quality of content. Right. I mean, there's not a lot of things on Broadway today on Broadway that, that I am excited to see because for me, now the arts have been redefined mm -hmm. um, to be that which inspires the heart, you know, yeah. to really bring beauty and inspire. And so that's why we started the company, Inspiring, Inspiring Arts. arts. Mm -hmm. and, and so now all of this, I just feel almost like I got a prophetic word as you were speaking down and something about Horizons of Gold that is like a seed into that, that place. Uh, Father, I, I thank you that this incredible pageant, Lord, this incredible uh, play is, is a seed for the Renaissance, Lord. I ask you to lead Beth. Just show her. She's, she's listening. Show her where to plant that seed. Show her who to send that to. Lord, that when the theaters open, Lord, when they're looking for new material, it'll be there. Thank you, Lord. I just release that. And so, Father, lead, guide, and, and continue to bless her with, with creative ideas, creative writing, and, and bless her with great people and composers. In Jesus' name, amen. So I guess the prophetic word was that, that you know, get it, continue to get it out there, because I think right now people are confused. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole industry is confused, mm -hmm. and they're losing money. It's like, what what is going on? It's cool. The um, sort of the theme verse for Horizons of Gold is um, to sow seeds mm -hmm. with tears will reap yeah. with songs of joy. Uh, yeah. And yeah. so um, there's a lot of tears in this in this story. Oh, it's just yeah. heart wrenching what oh, happens yeah. to these people. And so, but it's the faithful perseverance and sowing seeds when nothing is coming up and there's no rain. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that's, that's a word for everybody is oh, that yeah. God knows um, about the farmer, you know, yeah. and what, how, how we're supposed to be faithful and just continue to plant seeds no matter what arena that's in. That's right. So I, remember, I remember me and uh, my wife went to see it the, the first year, and it was like, you know, here I am, like, a grown man in there crying, wiping tears out of my eyes. I'm like, but it's so inspirational and so touching. So it, when you get a chance, you, uh, I don't know when it's going to happen again, but. Well, 
It's McBride's call you'll want to come to. That's <laughs> that's one I'm that's one I'm like that one. So that one's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. But yeah, I think um, in 2018 there was a theater in Kentucky that that um, put on Horizons of Gold, and I was able to be in it. Wow. And in the final scene, I, w I was standing there, and I had that moment where I was like, you're not supposed to, when you're on stage, you're not supposed to look into the audience out there, and I did anyway. And I, <laughs> I, did, I was like, I saw two or three men, grown men, take their glasses off and be wiping their eyes. Oh, and yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> what I think, I think the thing that has been so deeply humbling is that the Lord is using it for healing, Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a healing anointing yeah. on it. So it it's does. just been really cool to see that God can use something that doesn't feel, the arts don't particularly feel spiritual, but they're very, they can be very spiritual yeah, they, they because they're them. awakening us to something that, I mean, I think for a lot of people, it's just like they're... And now, um, we, we were talking a little bit about how pretty much everyone feels like, I mean, you knew that you were created, but there's people that don't think they're creative, but, but we're all creative. Mm -hmm. We all have a creative side. Why? Because we're created by God. We're created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. and, and there's this ability, there's these talents that God has given us. The Bible says he gives us power uh, when in the financial realm to get wealth. He gives us creative abilities. Would you speak to, like, let's say a student doesn't feel too creative, just walk us through maybe some mentoring here on how to awaken, you know, the, the things in us that God mm -hmm. wants us to do, just little things that yeah. help us come alive to being led by the Holy Spirit and doing things for God that we would may not think about doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. For me, it was just kind of exciting because it was kind of odd that I didn't really know myself. I didn't, mm. I was raised in a very math science family and I don't know that I actually thought of myself as creative. I had someone like 10 years ago who said, well, you're a creative, like a creative, you're a creative. And I'm like, I am? <laughs> <laughs> you even know that. Hallelujah. Okay. I was a little slow, but um, I think the whole thing of like figuring out what that gift is, mm. that because we're made in the image of a creator, we are creative. Yes. And so being creative is like a, it's a fulfillment. Yeah. And that can be um, decorating your Christmas tree in a really new way. Or it can be, um, I, I'm going to say this, Dave. It can be building. <laughs> and he doesn't think he's creative. Right. Because he's not creative in the traditional sense of, artistically creative like and you know what I mean creating like, a new idea but or something. Cre being creative is to create something That's right. something so if that you wasn't bake there. a beautiful cake you are creative yeah I can bake really good brownies if too, you can I never like get to eat them you can harvest some <laughs> awesome tomato tomato oh, plants oh yeah my dad creates tomato plants I can't do that time. that's or grows them yeah so anyway I think <laughs> just like being just enjoying your creator and and just saying, what do you want me to create? It, it really could be something simple, yeah. but there's there's like sort of a new excitement, at least for me, in being creative. So um, I was just telling you, like even just composing a really compassionate email, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That you have to send to someone or writing a That's letter good. can be create. It's That's creative. Good. And um, so we're, we're supposed to be creating. We're yeah. supposed to be bringing into this world. Yeah, so We're, it's, we're yeah. creating... We're, uh, beauty for people. We're giving them uh, something to mm -hmm. lean on. C encouragement to me is a, is a big gift that God gives me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love to encourage people because you, by encouragement, you create emotion that wasn't there before. When somebody's about renting it and starting a church and, and you know, how many understand God wants to use us? He can use us to plant a church. He can use us uh, uh, in helping our children grow mm -hmm. and, and, and expand their understanding of things. When you start speaking into a child's life and you're, you're expanding their heart. I remember telling my children almost every night before I would put them to bed, I would pray for them. Plan. He's got great things for you. And I remember my son Stephen looking at me. He goes, what are they, Dad? And I'm like... <laughs> 
I don't know. <laughs> but he's going to show you. He's going to show you. And you, you, these, ki- these children are canvases of God, their heart, their mind. And so it, let's say you, you're out of your child rearing years. And, but you, there's children and teens that we get to speak into their life and help them find their path. Because they don't know. You, you were creative, but it didn't dawn on you that you were because nobody had really told you that. But or just, I think even just finding purpose, finding yeah. a deeper purpose. Like if That's you're good. really good at hospitality, I'm not. I'm not really that good at that. I mean, come on over, but we <laughs> might have pizza because it's not my <laughs> gift, right? right? But if you're really good at that, know that there's purpose in it. So f- I, think, I think the big thing is like there's actually beautiful purpose in whatever God has created you to do yes. instead of just not good at what you're good at. Right. You know, yeah, don't minimize. Don't minimize what uh, uh, what God is. Mm-hmm. And know, especially in this season, we're supposed to. We need to be doing things that bring fulfillment that we can say, "I have purpose to get out of mm-hmm. bed, and I'm going to do that little thing or that big thing or the thing that I can't see the end of because I don't know how it's going to turn out." Mm-hmm. So we keep, you know, I mean, if you're a teacher these days. Every day is like, what? How is this going to go? How is How's this, this going to go? go? <laughs> so with our theater company, so we've been a fledgling theater company for, uh, you know, mm. four four solid years, and we've done eight big productions and uh, with you know big casts and very successful and you know junior high, high school, college age. Come on in. So, yeah. so our theater company has always kind of wanted to do something at Christmas time, but we've always been really, you know, in the cycle of what we do, and cr- people are like, Christmas, okay, Christmas is just, you know, it's so much, right? Yeah, we've never done, like, big productions uh-huh. here, because, you know, I'm a family guy. I know that people are family people mm-hmm. here, and they love to spend their so holidays with family, so on. we're not doing big pageants, but you came and you had an idea about doing something with Inspiring Arts here for Christmas. So share that. Um, well, yeah. We thought that maybe a church, maybe. if we were in a church, we could do something um, for people just to, to be back into a way that we could really share something beautiful and something that can bring hope to mm. people. And so... so. Um, it, it's going to be a little bit scaled down because it's going to be right here. Uh, it won't mm-hmm. be in a big theater. Okay. Um, It'll be right be here in the sanctuary. At Life Church mm-hmm. in the sanctuary, and it's called Legacy. Um, it, it didn't exist about four weeks ago, so no. we're, I'm still writing it. So, like, <laughs> conceiving right. it, as, you know, so we're already in rehearsals. I'm sort of also a risk taker. Also, be a risk taker because it's really kind of fun yes. to just go out and just start something. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, like, now I have to depend on God because I have all these people in the cast and we're coming to rehearsal and I don't have the whole thing written. But I ha- I, it's, it's in there. It's the in Lord, it. yeah, it's, it's it. fine. Um, but four weeks ago, you come to Kathy and I, and you yeah, shouldn't say that. that. I want to say that again. <laughs> But it's so cool. Uh, uh, tell us about it. What What is the journey of Legacy? So it is, it's about a girl who's 20 years old, and she is kind of had it with 2020. Mm. She's, she's just, you know, under it, and she's like, nobody gets me because my life got ruined. And, you know, if you're old like me, it doesn't matter. But when you're 20 <laughs> years old and your whole life gets ripped out, you know, so she's got an, a little bit of an attitude. She comes to her grandma's house for Christmas, and um, they're putting up the decorations. And she sort of has a little tirade and kind of embarrasses the family and is a little disrespectful to grandma. And Grandma's like, honey, why don't you go up in the attic and find that box? I'm missing one of, you know, it's an old antique box full of letters. And it is letters of her great, 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 great Mm. grandmother. So anyway, the the story will, the audience will be taken through American history, through Mm. all these different pieces of um, this girl's uh, family. Mm -hmm. So she finds old newspapers and then she finds an old diary of her grandmother and she she finds that all these people each each stop along the historical path is is Christmas Eve. Yeah. So she so the letter is is dated, you know, 1845. It's December 24th, 1845. And each person who writes the letter is also 20 years old. And she realizes so one of the one of them is a 
Civil War soldier. He's 20 mm. years old, and he's wounded, and he's her great-great-great-grandfather. And she realizes, okay, maybe my life isn't mm -hmm. you know, just quite as bad as I thought. Mm. So it kind of goes through all these moments in American history at Christmas time. And um, wow. there was a, in 1918, there was a pandemic. Really? The Spanish influenza. Yeah. And so she kind of goes through all things. She, she finally finds the box. And she's like, okay. She opens it up. And of course, it's the nativity. She takes out Jesus. And she's Ooh, kind of had to. Just <laughs> she kind of has to much. come to terms. Each one of these letters is written to, you know, mom or sister so-and-so or whatever. Mm. And the last thing that they say in the letter is keep the faith. Keep wow. the faith. Keep wow. No matter what you're going through, mm -hmm. keep the faith. Wow. Wow. And so she gets to her grandmother, and her grandmother is my mom's age, right? So she grew up in the 60s, mm -hmm. and there were riots in mm -hmm. the streets. And so mm -hmm. at every stop along the way, we can see a little picture or a big picture that was maybe even mm -hmm. worse than 2020 in, yeah. in one right. way or another. <laughs> and so, um, so, so keep the faith. So she ha she's confronted with this, and her legacy, that's the name of the show, her legacy yeah. is the faith wow. of her family, wow. that she has to make a decision if she's going to carry on. That and, is so and, good. And choose to. So, so spoiler, good. she does. She does choose to. But, yeah, she's, he's, she's visited by all these different people, and, and each one is a true story of American history. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. It's, uh, it's kinda, the events of the day. Grandpa, how many had... How many had grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, great grandpa saved? Anybody? So we have, there's this history. Now, if you don't, of course, you start your history. That's right. You start your legacy now. Mm -hmm. And you break those things off. My mammal, I call her mammal, um, she was really the only one that was that was saved mm -hmm. um, that I remember. But my my great grandma on my dad's side, great grandma Rice, yeah. was a powerful, powerful. Yeah, yeah, sides. on both sides. Going back to Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. And, and but you don't know who was in that that line and who prayed for you well, and, without and even just knowing. How you. unaware she is, yeah. and how unaware we sort of are in our. We're not as connected to our our yeah. family as I think maybe they were in the past. But yeah. so it's it's. It's been cool just to be on the Can't journey wait. of like writing something and, and you know being you know the other one I'm writing I'm writing in this really long process but this one I'm writing completely under the gun and so um, <laughs> and this is all going to take place in December yeah. legacy is going to happen mm -hmm. right here they're not al really mm -hmm. allowing it so, so yeah the, the the restrictions on the theaters of course are a little different than the restrictions on a church so. Hallelujah. We're in a church, we're in a and church. we're gonna do it. So we're, we are gonna be distanced, and um, yeah. I think we're gonna we're gonna I think we're gonna hit all of the um, requirements of the state anyway. We're gonna yeah. be extremely careful, and um, but you know, I'm excited. We want to work around things and make it and just plow through. And so you're you're doing auditions right now. Done. No, oh, those are done. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. So you got your cast and everything. Yeah. Tara Hill's going to be in the show. Tara, our worship leader. Jackie. Come on. Jackie. Is that Jackie? Jackie back there? Is Jackie? Jackie. Wave at us, she's Jackie. Gonna, yeah, Jackie's going to be on stage. Uh, she's, just, she's just like this. She's like, mm, move on. Dave, come on up here. I tell you. Dave's going to be in the show. Yes, of course Dave will be. Uh, I, I, I just feel the presence of God. When we were talking about uh, especially to create a message from what God is is speaking to me. We don't look at it that way, but it's it's for real. Um, That's right. That's it it, right. it it really is. And so at work, think creatively when you're when you're going through whatever your day brings. What is God saying? How can I bring beauty into a bad situation? How can I bring the presence of God into a situation? that isn't so wonderful mm -hmm. and allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. God is creating out of bad situations in your life something that is going to bring him praise and bring you a blessing. Yes. He's doing it right now. Yes. It's happening. You don't have to wonder about it. It's going on right now.